is Brandon Sierra. Um, I work currently for McDonald's Selznick Associates, which is a talent agency based here in Los Angeles, uh, also with offices in New York City. I actually just uh, came over to this company back in November after working at Clear Talent Group, another a competitor uh, in the industry, and I was at Clear for 11 years approximately. Um, and before that, the way that I, I found my way into this crazy side of the industry was uh, through the professional dance circles of New York City. I was a, a working dancer in New York for a uh, handful of years, probably, I think I lived in Manhattan for eight years. Um, and so dance has always been a part of my life, dance and performance in general, I should say. I, you know, I was a big musical theater nerd way back in the day where, you know, we still stress that triple threat mentality, but certainly back in the 80s and the time when I was doing all, you know, it was the real deal. So I was a triple threat, like singer, dancer, actor, wanted to be that like big Broadway star, moved to New York. And I found my way to clear through actually dance in New York and had met some of the, the agents there. And we'd had conversations over the years and I just kind of stuck in my own little bubble in my circle of pre-existing relationships. Uh, having worked at Broadway Dance Center there for years and um, working with the Pulse on tour and at that beginning stages of that convention. And ultimately, once I I realized that, you know, there, there would be something else to come after my performance career, which of course we never think of when we're doing it. We're like, I'm going to do this forever. And we never listen to our parents. We're like, well, what are you really going to do? And I'm like, no, I'm really going to do this. Like, uh, I started hitting that point, like when I was like 28 years old, where I just was like, things hurt as a dancer. You know, my body hurt. I didn't want to drag myself out of bed at 6 a.m. to hop on a train, to run downtown, like to Midtown, to Ripley Greer, and sign in, to stand outside in the cold for an hour, to go on audition for whatever next, you know, Broadway show or cruise or stock show or whatever. Like, you know, I just started getting to that mental block and I started saying, what's next? And so I literally had just had a conversation with people at Clear probably like a month before I had just finished like my, one of my last jobs, which was in Italy, which was amazing. Um, and I, I came back from that trip and said, huh, I think I need to go follow up with those people. And I just walked in the door basically and said, hey, teach me this side of it. Like I'll work here for free. So I, I started as an intern at Clear's New York office for like a year. Yeah, then they moved me out uh, to their home base office in Los Angeles, which is what brought me here 10 years ago now. Um, and I worked my way up, intern, assistant, co-director, director of their dance division there uh, for years until, like I said, I switched to MSA where I'm now their director of talent. So I'm, I'm overseeing the dance brand for sure, but I'm also helping develop and oversee their theatrical, commercial, and digital teams as well. I mean, the typical day, I mean, I guess there is no typical day, but, uh, you know, our days are full of client interaction. You know, I always tell clients like, or people, friends of mine even, that don't really understand our business. Um, we're really like an information relay system, right? Like we're, we're kind of the hub of all this back and forth because we're dealing with clients and getting audition information to the clients. We're working with uh, the vendors, the buyers, you know, casting directors, directors, choreographers, producers, whoever is in a hiring position. They're working on whatever projects. So we're sending them packages all the time with, you know, all of the talent that fit whatever they're looking for, waiting for them to send us back their selections. Then we send the selections, the audition information, then they book the job, hopefully. And then we're sending booking information this way, scheduling this way, you know, it's all this back and forth. But, you know, it's interesting, specifically in the dance side of things, uh, that world is is really unpredictably wide open, which is what makes it more interesting and more fun to me most days. You know, it's never the same because throughout the day for a dance agent, you're looking at multiple different platforms of entertainment. You're looking at TV, film, you know, music videos, touring with artists, Disney, cruises, you know, lots of different opportunities where dancers can find employment. So we're not just looking at breakdowns all day long, although we do because we have to look for those commercial opportunities for dancers when we're, you know, looking at those or for film and some theater pops up on, you know, breakdowns and things like that as well. Um, but we're not just glued to that all day long doing that. We're, it's kind of pretty a mixed bag of 
yes, we're doing that and we're looking at things. We're also looking up our own things and calling and pitching and then just being a resource, uh, you know, for any, any, any real agency in this business, we're all a resource and people know that. So when they're working on a project, people are going to pick up the phone also and call sometimes and say, Hey, I'm working on this thing. Maybe they're not putting out a breakdown. So can you send me X, Y, Z or, Hey, we're about to put out this breakdown, make sure you see it so that we can get your selects in. So that's pretty much, you know, the, uh, the bulk of it. And then of course you're, you're meeting with clients all the time, whether they're current clients, prospective clients, you know, for me, I'm always trying to communicate and be available and make sure that, you know, people are getting that engagement and that interaction that they deserve. So uh, that's a huge component of the day as well. I'm looking for talented people, obviously always, you know, that's a, uh, whenever we have, uh, this, I guess, will go specifically to dance, but it goes to all the other divisions I, I work with as well now. But I, I have this rule of thumb, this little phrase that, you know, uh, throughout the history of my career, we've always had two open auditions a year for dancers specifically. Uh, one in the winter, one in the summer, just different ages because kids are in school usually. So then we open it up one time a year for that. But anyway, at those open calls, you see a lot, you know, we'll see like 800 to 1,000 people in a day. Uh, at a big open call in Los Angeles, sometimes of specifically dancers. Uh, and I always go into that wanting to genuinely give everybody an opportunity. Obviously, I can sometimes walk in that room and tell who's really prepared for that next level and who's not. But I still feel like everyone has an opportunity to show us regardless. So everybody gets a shot. Um, but I always tell my team, we go into that room with the mindset of as good or better. So when we're going in there, we're looking for talented people. We're looking for people that we think we can help. But realistically, I'm looking for people that are as good or better than the people that are already currently on my roster. Uh, and sometimes, you know, things are, there's so many things that are out of our control in this industry. And so we really take a hard look every time before we go into an open call, we're studying what's happening in the industry, what our current roster reflects and maybe seeing what holes need to be filled, you know? who's out there working because just like everything in, in life and in our entertainment world, for sure, there's trends and they do this all the time. So we're always looking at, well, is there a type that's working a lot and have they taken all of our types from our roster and do we need to get a few more or is there something that's not working right now? And so that somebody could come to audition and they could be amazing. But if I have five people that are just like them stylistically and look wise, I probably can't take them then just because I don't want to waste their time either. And they deserve finding somebody that can give them more attention than I can than, you know, the roster that I currently am working with. So a lot of that, but you know, you look for that and you look for good people. For me, I always, I like good people. I like to work with nice people, no drama, no ego. I don't think anybody likes that, but we all deal with it at some point for sure. But it's, it's just a good quality. I think, and you know, people that work all the time yet generally work all the time because they're nice people not just because they're good. Somebody trying to pursue a career in dance, I would say one, keep training no matter how good you are, and you probably are very good. Uh, myself, a, a good example of being that young, little bit of ego, small town, you know, Corning, New York, where I'm from, and growing up and going to study in Niagara Falls, which we spoke about earlier, and thinking I was just gonna move to New York City and it was all gonna happen, and I was going on Broadway the next week. like one of the best pieces of advice that I heard from one of my teachers then was just remember, you're going to hear no 100 times before you hear a yes. And that was true. I didn't believe it. I was like, yeah, right, whatever. But it's true. And that's okay. Like, I think, I think people need to understand that it's okay to experience a little bit of that uh, failure or disappointment because it really is just going to, to, to thicken your skin to build up this, you know, this, this resistance and make you a stronger performer in general. And not every job is going to be for you. And that's okay. You just have to have the mentality to say, well, guess what? Like, I know what I offer. And as long as you're confident in what you offer, there will be work for you. It won't be every job, but there will be jobs for you. And you just say, you know what? Today wasn't, I wasn't what they were looking for today. On to the next, there will be more auditions tomorrow. I've seen it a million times. Sometimes the best dancers do not book the job. That's just the reality. Sometimes it wasn't their day. Maybe they messed up. Sometimes 
you know, people just have different relationships. Sometimes it's a look thing or a height thing or, you know, so many things we just can't control. You just have to be able to say, ah, well, cool. Next one. The basics are still the same for any performer, specifically a dancer. You want strong headshots. Uh, you want a truthful resume. It doesn't need to be the longest resume. And if you're brand new, it's okay. You don't need to have a ton of bookings, but it needs to be truthful. What I mean by that is don't put names on your resume as far as your training or that don't really exist. And don't put skills on your resume that don't really exist because people really look at those things. I look at resumes all the time at an audition. Um, and you want your pictures, honestly, to be fully reflective of who you are. So if you're a versatile dancer who, you know, can play a different range of character or a different range of styles or, you know, wants to do a commercially uh, driven career path or a tour driven career, those pictures have to speak to those things as well. So a lot of that will come once you've signed with an agent. So if you haven't signed yet, I think the most important thing is just make sure that they're current and they look like you and, you know, they're quality enough. Like they don't have, you don't have to spend thousands on a, on a great headshot. Uh, if you haven't signed yet, they just have to, you know, be current and look like you because one of the, my biggest pet peeves is to see somebody's picture from four years ago that they look nothing like now, or even if it's recent and they don't look anything like it, you know, they could be blonde in real life, but they were brunette in their headshot or, you know, they got a bunch of tattoos or shaved their head. None of that stuff do I care about. I'm not your mom. I don't care. But it has to represent you because eventually, you know, when we're doing, when we're working with you and we're working on these submissions and we're putting a talent out there, we, we need to let casting know what you look like now. So it needs to be, you know, up to date. Uh, specifically, I think for dancers too, what they can do to help themselves is uh, you don't need to have a full reel uh, you know a lot of people think they need a reel in the dance world not so much necessary for dancers especially ones that are just starting out it's really more a tool that's used for the creative side choreographers and people in that whole world um but footage is key if you have strong footage that you can uh send a couple of different links if you're self-submitting to an agency or you know what have you having a couple short links of whatever you do, you know, you're a technically trained dancer or it's hip hop or it's freestyle or tap or whatever. Uh, just a couple of those is so much more useful than a full reel of me trying to sit and watch two minutes, which realistically nobody's going to do to then find what your best suit is or where I can see you, or I have to go to one minute and 36 seconds to find you in the yellow shirt marker that you wrote down for me in the back right corner of this class you took. Don't bother, you know, just send us clear, footage of what you do and what you offer and that can really help somebody and it can help us in turn help sell dancers too when we have stuff once you've been signed to pitch you to choreographers or people that don't know you so those are all helpful headshots resume footage if you if you use social media i'm sure that will be a question at some point but uh if you use social media uh it doesn't matter what level if you're an influencer level person or you're just a day-to-day -day person like me who just has the random duck face selfies and dog pictures like it doesn't matter what does matter is making sure you know you have to still think of it as your digital resume at some level like even if you put only a couple dance videos up here and there and make sure it's good stuff because you don't know who's looking it could be somebody like me it could be a choreographer that trust me they're all looking at that now like I get emails from choreographers all the time saying, hey, who's this person? I see that, they, that you rep them on Instagram and I could not have even submitted them yet, but that's the age we're in now. So think about that. If you, if you have those pages, just think about what your, what your image is. And if you want a completely personal one, great. Then make one that is for business as well so that people have something to go to. And the dance world is pretty interesting because as I mentioned briefly earlier, you know, if you're an actor, you're probably, you know, specifically focused on one type of project. You know, you want to be in movies or you want to be on TV or you want to work on Broadway uh, and all those things are great. And some people actually are able to achieve all those things, but usually it's a one focus uh, category uh, and dance wise. I mean, it can also similarly, you can have a focus, but the, the variety of projects available to dancers are, it's massive because 
on any given day. You could audition for a music video, a film, a commercial, a TV show, Disney theme parks, cruise line, Broadway, all in one day. These could all happen in one day. And fundamentally, you're doing the same thing. It's all depending on, you know, stylistically what they're looking for. It's all part of your training. It's all part of your background. And if it's part of what you're trying to accomplish, yeah, there's so many different options out there. And the digital stuff now too, you know, a lot of dancers and young performers in general, there's so much opportunity out there. So yeah, you, you can really do anything. That's the fun part about being a dancer is it doesn't, it's a different experience all the time. I think, you know, one thing, if a parent is attending an event like this or, you know, just putting out the extra effort to help bring this attention to their child, whatever it is, you know, whether it's a school or an intensive or a summer camp, whatever it is, you're already going the extra mile. You're putting an investment into this for them, which I think is already applaudable for most parents. Um, and if the kid really, really, really has that drive and you see it and, you, and a lot of parents have that question, you know, like I said, like are my own, you know, are you really going to do this forever? Is this what you want to do? And look at dance has paid my bills my entire adult life, knock on wood on my coffee table. Like it's, this is what I've done since I've been a young adult. So uh, it's come in different shapes and forms and whatever and different packages, but it's allowed me to have a very comfortable life doing what I love. And I'm lucky, I know that, and, and I'm appreciative for that. But it's it's doable. I tell parents that all the time, it is doable. And there are so many different paths you can take in this career of ours, dancer, actor, whatever it is. You know, you can try to, you know, dance on Broadway, dance for film. You can live in New York, you can live in LA, you can live in Atlanta. There's so many different things. You can be a company dancer. You can go to college and dance on your, you know, the college dance team there at halftime for whatever sports. You can do company work at the real artsy stuff overseas. Like you could be a cruise ship dancer for years. There's so many different avenues uh, that I think I always tell you it's worth exploring. And if it's what makes you happy, then, you know, go ahead and do it. Especially nowadays, you know, I wish when I was, you know, younger and when I was, you know, I did go to a traditional four year school because I did feel it was important for me at that time. Uh, and also it had a really great musical theater program and I was able to get good training and make great relationships. And I encourage people to go that route if they can. Uh, and you know, if they decide not to, that's cool too. I think nowadays offers such a different learning experience. You can do online schooling. There's so many different programs that uh, work with you. I have a lot of kids that are either in traditional schools out here in LA or they do the online thing, or there's even, there's a new wave of uh, this home uh, college schooling where they, you know, there are programs out here that translate professional dance jobs into credits so that then they can go to school with already X amount of credits under their belt just because of the amount of work they've done as a working dancer. Whenever I get that question from a parent like at, on location at an event, I always say, look, it's, a, it's a, such a personal conversation. Like I can give, so much advice and I love, you know, getting to share what I've learned with people over the years. But that's one thing that like I can talk forever about. But at the end of the day, it's really between the family and what they think is best for each other. And there's no wrong answer. You know, if, if you decide to go to school, great. The business isn't going anywhere. If you decide to move right to New York or L.A. and try it out and do the online thing, or whatever, it's a cheat. You know, you just have to be willing to put in the work. That's, that's all it is. So. Uh, well, be on time, for one. <laughs> um, nobody likes somebody that's late. That you know that phrase that goes around. That if you're if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're late, you're fired. That's I've heard that business uh, that phrase in this business quite a bit, um, and it's true. Uh, be prepared. Be confident. You know, it goes in, kind of hand in hand with earlier. I think you, you you just have to have fun with this, and you have to love this business so much. And yes, it's fun, but it's also your, your job. So you have to walk in with, you know, like it's a job interview with the most utmost confidence to tell that person sitting on the other side of the table or whatever room it is you're in that I am the person for this job. And you have to believe that the second you walk in, because the second you don't, I can promise you there's hundreds of other people that are. So you have to have that mentality all the time. Okay.
okay. So I'll be scouting for, well, everything because of my new work situation. So specifically, you know, dancers is my, my, my little niche and I know that world well, but I'm also building, you know, this theatrical commercial division and digital division. So I'll be looking for all types of different talent, but looking for, like I said, nice people, people that are driven, people that are talented, people that I feel we can work with together, you know, because that's what it is. It's a, it's a real relationship. I, I've never liked it when people say, oh, your agent has to work for you. No, I don't work for you. We work together. And so people that have that mentality and that kind of energy is what I'm looking for. And then, you know, obviously talented kids or people just that I feel with our guidance and with the instruction and, you know, the experience that we have to offer, the people that can take that and actually work with us to succeed. Just a clean headshot, good resume, like I said, because I really do look at all those things. You know, I've, I've definitely, at a open calls or even at uh, events like this, I, I've gone through resumes and when I see, I've been doing this a long time. So when I see friends' names on somebody's resume that may have trained uh, this, you know, contestant or student, uh, or, you know, they, they have whoever else on there, maybe they have done a job and I know that choreographer, I will pick up the phone and call somebody or text somebody or email and say, Hey, do you remember this person that you worked with? Do you remember this student that you, you know, came to whatever? Like, can you tell me a little more about their work ethic, about their personality, about their family, if they're a young kid? Because sometimes some of those parents can be a deterrent for some of these kids too. So I, I will go through that and I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up and I'll get a hold of somebody when I need to. And that's why I say don't lie because I've, seen, I've had it where people put these names on there and, I'll call somebody and be like, hey, tell me about this person. It looks like they've trained with you at, you know, whatever convention for the last five years. I don't know who they are. What? Like, you know, be truthful with those things. But, um, but that's what you need realistically to turn in. But I would say have that footage idea in the back of your brain. Because if I really do like somebody, I, I give them my card. You have my information. I talk to mom and dad or whoever is there. And I say, hey. Can you also later on today when you have time or whatever this weekend or sometime follow up and send me a few links of whatever it is they do or something maybe I didn't see them do because sometimes, you know, when we're scouting events similar to this one or even just scouting in general, we might only get to see them in one category. But, you know, I'm looking at this resume and it says they do everything else, too. If I didn't get to see everything else, I'm going to ask them, can you send me footage of these things? So have that stuff ready to go, I would say is is also super key to, to be ready to do. Uh, last piece of advice is have fun. You know, people, I, you see so many kids at wherever, open auditions, uh, weekend intensives, lots of different events that we all go to, and they get so internally nervous and anxious and they psych themselves out just remember that this is all fun, right? Like if you're, if you're doing this for a living and you want to do this for a living, it's work for sure. It's still work for me on the side of the thing that I'm doing, but I do it because this is fun. This job is the best job I could ever have asked for in my life. It keeps me young, it keeps me fun, it keeps me hip. Same thing for you know the clients. Like it, this is still a very fun career to have and it is a career. You still have to treat it like that. But if this ever becomes not fun for you, then it's probably not the career it, it just has to have that energy and you know when you walk into an event like yours and this event that i can't wait to come to you you have to just be excited and open for the opportunity and who cares if you mess up i don't when i see people mess up all the time i've messed up a million times i've forgotten a million eight counts and at the end of the day it doesn't really matter in a situation like this we're, we're looking for people you know i don't expect you to be perfect if you are then you probably don't need to come to anything you're going to be already in la or new york and working already we're all here to learn so don't be afraid of that just you know be yourself have fun and show people what you can do and the hard work you can put into it